Well, good morning. I trust you had a great week last week, and I hope you're looking forward to another great week this week. I just wanted to put out this short little video, hopefully as a source of encouragement to us all. It's obvious that these are unprecedented times. There are not many people still alive in this world who have been through a worldwide pandemic before. As of this past week, we have surpassed over 1.3 million deaths worldwide because of this COVID virus. Here in the United States alone this past week, we surpassed 241,000 people who have died because of COVID. This past week, the governor of Indiana announced a tightening of restrictions because of the COVID virus. And this past Thursday, the mayor of Indianapolis, along with Dr. Kane, the director of the Marion County Public Health Department, also announced a tightening of restrictions here in uh, the city of Indianapolis and Marion County because of uh, COVID. Uh, the cases are surging. Our posit seven-day positivity rate is now over 10%. Um, and so again, some unprecedented times, not only here in Indianapolis, but not only in the state, but in the country and the world as well. Turbulent times also because of the presidential election. Uh, as of this recording, which is on Friday, there are still two states that have not declared a winner. There are still some riots in some places in the country. There is still racial unrest in the country. Unemployment seems to be going back up as people, as the economy is shutting down again and people are losing their job. Um, last week, in Indianapolis, we surpassed the homicide mark. In 2020 so far, there have been more homicides than any other year. And we still have seven weeks left in the year. And as we watch the news and listen to the news and read the news online, it seems like it's all bad news. And sometimes it's tempting to give in to despair it's tempting just to throw up our hands and say, well, there's nothing that I can do. I can't do anything about all of this. Uh, it's just one bad thing after another. But I want you to listen to what King David wrote. O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. That's Psalm 131. David had numerous issues in his life. He was anointed king of Israel while Saul was still king. Saul still occupied the throne and yet David was anointed king and Saul was trying to kill him and David had to flee and as a result uh, he was not able to solidify his position as king for several years. And then after he becomes king he commits adultery with Bathsheba. Bathsheba becomes pregnant with his child and David tries to cover it up, and he's unsuccessful in his ability to cover up his adulterous affair. And so he has Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, sent to the front lines of the battle, and he is killed. And so David has this man murdered, in effect, in order to try to cover up his adulterous affair. And then months later, before the child is born, Nathan the prophet comes to him and he confronts David and David realizes his sin. And David is told by Nathan that the child that Bathsheba will give birth to will die. And sure enough, she gives birth to a son. And David fasts and he prays. And about a week later, the child dies. Also as a result of his adulterous affair and then his murder of Bathsheba's husband Uriah and in the effort to cover it all up, David is told that his children, his own flesh and blood, will rebel against him 
and will commit some horrible sins in public and everybody's going to know about it. And sure enough, a few years later, Absalom, one of his sons, tries to take the throne away from his father. Absalom leads a rebellion against his own father and tries to make himself king. And his other children commit some horrible sins and they do it in public and everybody knows about it. And again, this was in the days before Twitter and before Facebook and before all this social media. But word spread like wildfire of all the horrible things that David's children were doing in public. And you have to realize that David was humiliated by all of that. And as much as he tried to stop it, he couldn't. And there was a lot of turmoil in his life. And yet he wasn't arrogant. David knew he didn't have all the answers. And so he writes, O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great or too marvelous for me. And to me, one of the fascinating things about all of this turmoil, the, the COVID-19 pandemic that has swept the world, here in the United States, our, president, uh, our presidential election. And you hear these people on social media and on TV, and they say, well, if I was governor, I know what I would do. Well, or they would say, well, if I was mayor, I know what I would do. Or if I was the president, I know what I would do. Or if I was in charge, I know what I would do. And the simple truth of the matter is, none of us, none of us have all the facts. None of us have all the answers. I trust that the people in authority are doing their best to handle this pandemic. I trust that the people in authority are doing their best to handle this presidential election and the election for the senators and the House of Representatives. I trust that our authorities are doing their best. I don't have all the facts. None of us have all the facts. I don't have all the answers. I'm not sure I have any answers. But there is one thing that I can do. And there's one thing that we all can do. And there's one thing that we all should do, including myself, and that is, I can calm my soul. David said, I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. David made the choice to calm down and to quiet his soul. He came to realize that he couldn't undo his adultery and he couldn't undo the murder of Uriah and he couldn't undo the fact that his own son tried to take his throne away from him and he couldn't undo all the horrible things that his children had done and it wasn't that he just threw up his hands and said well there's nothing I can do about it but he calmed and he quieted his soul and he compares it to a weaned child with its mother. And those of us who have seen a young child laying on the bosom of its mother, peaceful, calm, sound asleep, not a care in the world. What a beautiful picture that David paints for us. I don't know when this COVID-19 virus pandemic is going to be over. I know Pfizer has announced that they have a vaccine that's about 90% effective and I, and I hope that's true and I hope the vaccine uh, gets made and sent around the world and, and I hope it works and I hope we don't have to keep wearing masks and I hope we don't have to do all of this social distancing and I hope we don't have to keep wiping down everything. I hope we don't have to keep washing our hands 15, 20 times a day. But even if we do, even if the vaccine does not prove effective, even if we have to keep wearing a mask, 
even if we have to keep staying six feet apart, even if I have to keep washing my hands 15 to 20 times a day, I can be calm and my soul can be quiet. And David closes out that song by saying, O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Our hope is in the Lord. There's no need to panic. There's no need to give in to despair. There's no need to go around saying, well, if I was governor, I'd tell you what I'd do. There's no need to go around saying, well, if I was in charge, I know what I'd do. No, we don't. We don't have the facts. We don't have the answers. But we can hope in the Lord. And we can calm our soul. Let me encourage you. Call someone this week. Send them a text. Send them a tweet. Uh, put a post on Facebook. Sit down and write them a card and put it in the mail. Pray about it. Think about it. Keep each other in your thoughts. Keep each other in your prayers. But never give up. Never panic. Never give in to despair. Calm your soul. Quiet your soul. I pray you have a great week.